Today, we're considering how digital platforms are changing behaviour, both of businesses and individuals, and why it's important to, to develop a policy on cybersecurity. I'm joined by Abby Sayed, Director of Dainta. Abby is an expert in cybersecurity, uh, both in strategy and implementation, and has helped many organisations to develop a custom approach to protecting their business. So, welcome, Abby. Obviously, the um, digital world has, has provided many opportunities and benefits. How would you describe the uh, potential for risk? Hi, Alistair. First of all, I'd just like to say thank you very much for having me in here today. Um, I think you ask a really, really important question um, about risks. Now, in order to contextualise risk, we need to understand who we, are, who we are at risk from and what are the threats. Um, effectively who are the adversaries and what motivates them now in cyber or in the cyber domain we talk about threat actors now broadly speaking there are four types of actors we have amateurs activists organized criminals and nation state now amateurs are often motivated by bragging rights uh, they often target large organizations and will seek to promote their work um, activists are motivated uh, to disrupt business operations or to deface it publicly. Um, they are often motivated by a political or religious ideal. Um, the third group, the organized criminals, seek to extort organizations uh, for money by holding their systems and or their data to hostage. Their target is really anyone and everyone. Um, Finally, we have um, probably the most sophisticated attacker, which we refer to as the nation state actor. They are motivated by either extracting intelligence from foreign nations um, or valuable information. So, for example, uh, organizations that hold a lot of intellectual property, major defense contractors, probably law firms, etc. Um, however, we've also seen over the last maybe year or two um, that these nation state actors are also trying to infiltrate strategic organizations within a country so that they can disrupt operations if required. So this is kind of moving more into the cyber warfare domain. So for example, a, a national food supply chain or a national energy supply chain. And you can imagine that if they were to successfully disrupt those types of networks, the chaos that would ensue within the country. So I guess that's kind of how we look at, before we look at risk, the kind of things we look at to understand who we're at risk from and what their motivations are. Okay. Well, well, given that range of threats, um, does a business protect against everything? What is their scope for reducing risk? Yeah, that's another really good question, uh, Alistair, and something we get asked a lot. Uh, now, first of all, I'd say it's very highly unlikely a business can mitigate risks, um, that all the risks that threat actors are, are, are kind of posing, because these actors are always innovating and finding ways to bypass the defences that organisations put in place. Also, from a, just a practical perspective, organizations need to consider the cost of mitigating risks versus the benefit to their business. But certainly organizations can manage and mitigate risks. Um, and there are actually many things they can do. Okay. Uh, and may, maybe could, is there a particular strategy you might advise to follow? Yeah, absolutely. Now, kind of just to keep it very high level um, and, and simple, um, I kind of like talking in a four-step process. So I use this analogy of a four-step process. Um, and, and I also like to use the analogy of protecting a, a house. Um, as that's something that most of us can relate to, you know, in terms of protecting our homes. Um, now we all love our homes um, and we'd all love them to be secure as Fort Knox. But the reality is that it may not be physically or financially possible, uh, neither practical to put that level of security around your home. Therefore, we need to find the right balance. So what step one is, it's all about understanding what are we trying to protect and who are we trying to protect it from? So let's say in my home, I have a lot of jewellery and I have also a young family. Um, they are my critical assets and I want to protect them against nighttime burglary. So that's my threat. That's what I'm worried about is those assets being hurt, stolen, impacted by the nighttime burglaries. Now, for a business... This could be your e-commerce platform that you really can't afford to have disrupted because that's your entire business operates on the e-commerce platform. Or, for example, you could be a small bakery and 
it's your secret cupcake recipe. You know, it's really what you as a business hold dear that you don't want to kind of be uh, stolen or exposed or taken away. Um, step two is um, about understanding the vulnerabilities and addressing them. So now we've kind of, step one, we've worked out what we're trying to protect and who we think we're trying to protect it from. But what are the vulnerabilities that these, these attackers can exploit? So again, going back to the home analogy, you know, I need to assess how a burglar may enter my property. So for example, front doors and windows are the most likely entry points. So now I can implement some processes and technologies if required to ensure that these doors and windows are always locked and I'm using locks to a certain BSI standard. Um, perhaps I might install a CCTV camera or, or sorry, a door entry system just to make sure anyone ringing on the door, I can recognize who they are before the door gets opened. Um, and for nighttime, because my concern is nighttime, I might put some motion sensors, um, motion sensor lights. So, you know, if everyone, anyone comes up to the property, the, the lights, lights will turn on. Um, now, I guess similarly, um, I guess we talked a lot of those were kind of like, pro, um, sorry, were like technologies that I can put in place, but process is also very important. So a simple thing I can do at home is to just insist the last person up from you know at night time make sure they do a visual inspection of all the doors and windows to make sure they're closed make sure the alarm code is set so there's a process element to it as well because you know you could have the best locks but if someone's left the door open then you know it's not going to prevent a burglar from coming in so similarly in a business context my vulnerabilities could be my it system my website or even my staff you know a lot of businesses have insider threats where you've got staff that have got potentially access to lots of information, lots of sensitive information. Hmm. Now, <clears throat> what are the things that I can do then? So I can run regular vulnerability scans uh, to check my systems have all the latest security patches. And this is something that every single organization should be doing is to constantly checking that their the IT they're using is up to the latest version. And if they're using things like corporate tools or so like um, things like Microsoft, et cetera, you know, it's just making sure that the, you know, you're, you're keeping your software up to date regularly. Um, also, like there's there's a lot of work they can do in terms of implementing processes such as ensuring everyone's using complex passwords and that the passwords are changed frequently. So, again, you don't have to be a cybersecurity expert in order to kind of think about these aspects of, of security. Yeah. Um, and what I'd say is putting in place good cyber hygiene is relatively simple and does not need to cost a fortune. You know, a lot of these things are really relatively easy to do and, and fairly, fairly cheap to do as well. So step three, we need to monitor. Now, once we address the vulnerabilities, we need to recognize that we need to still consistently monitor to make sure new vulnerabilities are not emerging or the threat landscape is not changing. For example, maybe... I'm getting some work done to my house and there's now scaffolding um, be, that's been put up ar around the property. Now, previously, maybe I, you know, my vulnerability was people breaking in. So I had all the windows and doors locked and, and, a, and a doorbell alarm. But now because the scaffolding, my first floor is also a vulnerability. Someone can come in through the first floor. And previously, maybe I didn't put secure locks on the first floor. So now I've got to think about actually my, my kind of threat landscapes changed. Do I need to take additional measures um or maybe the, the the change could be something completely different so for example the the area that i live in now is being targeted by an organized crime group uh, and the local police have come and knocked on doors and said look just to let you know be more vigilant there's a local organized crime group that are conducting burglaries during the day so if that's the case maybe i need to now install cctv camera to record footage um or even I might consider paying a private security firm um, who operates in the area to kind of come around every three or four hours and just kind of inspect the outside of the property, make sure everything's OK, um, kind of, you know, keep an eye on the people on the street, make sure there's no kind of rogue looking characters, uh, nefarious characters kind of loitering around the neighborhood. Now, similarly, businesses need mechanisms to monitor um, their vulnerabilities. And this could be as simple as running audits, you know, so they can get consultancies, organizations to come in and run audits at a regular interval. Um, it could be around them doing spot checks on some of the processes they've put in place. So are their staff actually using complex passwords, um, things and, and making sure they're not sharing passwords, you know, via text message or writing down a piece of paper. 
Um, but also, you know, they could buy managed security services. So similar to me buying some, you know, a service from someone to come and look around the property every four, four hours, there was organizations out there that provide managed cybersecurity services where they will monitor your network for cyber attacks. So effectively, you're kind of mitigating some of that risk. Finally, step four um, is, is about planning for the worst. Now, <clears throat> in, in, in the cybersecurity industry, we've seen that no matter how high you build your, build your walls and how thick you build them, if the determined attackers will always find a way through. That kind of is a given. So we have to be on the front foot for when that happens. We have to assume that we will be victim to that attack one day. So going back to the house analogy, um, it could be that one day that you know the family come home and they find that they've been burgled. Who do they call? What do they touch? Um, where do the kids go to sleep that night? Um, how do we even know if the burglars left the property? So all these questions, you, you kind of want to almost have a have thought about those first before the burglary. So when the situation happens, you're not panicking and you've got a clear plan of action. Um, so again, in, in the kind of business analogy, um, you know, we use the term instant response. So an instant has happened to your organization, a cyber instant. What you need to have a clear understanding of is what is your comms plan? How are you going to communicate to your customers? How will you ensure the attackers haven't are, are not still within your uh, system? Uh, how do you know what they've taken, what they've touched, what they've compromised? So effectively, you know, having a good plan for once you've been attacked is, is really, really important. Mm. Um, I think that sorry, the housing analogy seems like a very good one, actually. And I, and I guess I guess the important thing there is that that kind of shared occupancy and that cascade of responsibility, you know, unwitting participants in your own security. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just before, um, I guess one other thing I just wanted to very briefly touch on is um, it's just worth saying that. Um, that businesses today are actually very fortunate because you can buy cybersecurity insurance. So just very much like a homeowner, you can buy contents insurance and, and home insurance. Um, businesses can now buy cybersecurity insurance. And that's something that I would highly recommend. So particularly when it comes to things like instant response, where if you've got the insurance and you've had a breach or you've had an attack, you know, your, your insurance provider, subject to like any terms and conditions of insurance, you've done all the basics that I've described in steps one, two, and three, they will help you um mitigate that incident and get your business back on track so i just wanted to put it out there because i think cyber insurance is still a relatively new concept but particularly for small business owners or kind of startup scale up businesses is it I, I think it's just a must you know you should you should be um getting cyber insurance along with all your other business insurances okay that's a solid suggestion i agree and um so we hear cyber threats coming at a national even international level are there any steps the government have taken to to protect the community that businesses should know about yeah absolutely i mean the uk government has been very active in cybersecurity, and you know they've they've done that through organizations like the national Cybersecurity center um and actually you know we are one of the leading nations in this space and, and I'm really proud to say that and pleased to say that. Um, so, you know, the National Cybersecurity Centre, for example, they provide businesses with a whole range of um, uh, tools and, and assets that can be used. Everything from awareness training to even some free tools that you can sign up to and subscribe to or use. And the, the really good thing I like about what the National Cybersecurity Centre have done is they've tailored that guidance and advice for different types of organizations of different sizes. So if you go in there, they've got guidance for sole traders, for small startups, for medium-sized businesses, and even for large kind of conglomerate businesses. So it's a really, really kind of um, powerful set of uh, tools that they've got. And I'd highly recommend every business goes and looks at how they can interact and leverage what the NCSC offer. Um, but there's also kind of like other services that are out there. So there's something called Police Cyber Alarm, which helps organizations monitor and report malicious activity they face from the internet. And, and again, it's a very it's a free to use service, but effectively what you do is you 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 share with, with Police Cyber Alarm some of your monitoring data. And in exchange, they give you kind of situational awareness. And some of that's very localized. So if you're, for example, a um, an accounting firm on a high street, you might get intelligence around other firms within your neighborhood that have been compromised. So again, that's a free service that I'd recommend. 
I think also it's worth saying, I mean, this, this kind of conversation is very timely because October is also the National um, Cybersecurity Awareness Month. So there will no doubt be lots and lots of free seminars and webinars that people can sign up to uh, to increase their knowledge of the cybersecurity domain. So I'd encourage everyone to actively seek out um, these, these kind of seminars and webinars that are coming across in October. Okay, no, thank you. That's um, useful. And I, I guess businesses who are looking at maybe bringing in a, an external consultant like yourself, how, how, can, how can you help? Yeah, um, so I, I guess the way to think about it is consult, consultants or cybersecurity consultants are specialists in what they do. And they work with hundreds of organizations and they work with cyber day in, day out. And, and what they really do is they help organizations go through that kind of three to four step process that I've previously outlined, but they do that in a lot more detail and they do it to the relevant industry standards and they do it to the context of the business you're in. So I, I guess what it is, is it's just um, having access to somebody who really understands the domain and make sure that they're not just giving you the best advice, but they're tailoring that advice to the needs of your business. Um, also, um, often consultants can help when an attack has already happened. So if you don't have that cyber insurance and you're worried that someone might be in your network, they can help come in and put in place the right structures to, to support you with that incident. But really what the job of any good consultant is, is to reduce that cyber risk. So going back to your very first question about the risk, a good cybersecurity consultant is somebody who helps your organization to manage mitigate or transfer as much of that risk as possible so that you become less attractive to criminals and here's kind of like for me the the the, there's sort of like an economics within cyber and cyber crime which is a lot of the cyber criminals they want they ideally want to target organizations that have, have the least security in place again going back to the home analogy if you've got an alarm and you've got a cctv camera and, and clearly can see you've got some robust controls in place it's very unlikely a burglar would want to break into your property when there's a property next door that is not well lit mm. the doors are open etc so i think a lot of this is about making your business as unattractive as possible to cyber criminals and cyber hackers uh, and, and to make their kind of barrier to entries harder so that they will go for more easier targets. And I think that's where kind of consultants can really help a business do that. OK, well, look, thank you very much indeed. I think there's a, a lot of information that last few minutes. So so I'd like to thank every side for taking the time to talk to me today. And for those of you watching for more advice on or, or, or tips on business growth and revenue generation, visit my YouTube channel on my web page revenueworks.co.uk and in the meantime thanks abu and let's keep on growing <laughs> <laughs>